Welcome to Land Navigation for Search and Rescue. This video is part of a series designed to assist SAR volunteers in acquiring skills essential for safe, effective land navigation in a search and rescue environment. The videos for map reading, compass work, and GPS operation are designed to address Washington State's land navigation core competency requirements for ground searchers. Maps are created by assembling a set of map symbols, each associated with a feature the cartographer wants to include in the map. For every map there is a legend which defines symbols used in the map. This legend defines map symbols which are common to the great variety of maps used for search and rescue. This legend is specifically applicable to the USGS seven and a half minute series topographic maps, which cover the entire US, have been in production for many decades, and which arguably provide the foundation for all topographic maps used in search and rescue. This video highlights major categories of map symbols and illustrates the symbols commonly encountered in search and rescue operations. Man-made features, water-related features, coordinate systems, vegetation and surface features, contour lines and elevation. The next five slides illustrate the common symbols used for roads and trails. Secondary highways like this are usually paved roads with center line striping. Unimproved roads like this can be smooth dirt roads or almost impassable rocky path. This is a physical barrier blocking the road. Big rocks and deep ditches are common. Light duty roads are usually suitable for a typical car or truck. Four wheel drive roads can be little more than a wide trail. Better have a high clearance vehicle for this road. And it's not a bad idea to check with the local forest service for current road conditions before you take off. Here are some examples of the relative differences between unimproved roads, trails, and improved gravel roads for the area covered by this map. Get out your maps, go for a drive, explore the types of roads and trails in your operating area, and don't miss the road barrier symbols. Trail numbers are important. This road can be opened when you know the person with the keys. Who knows what this road is really like? Local experience is always important. Maps reflect the objectives of the cartographer and the information available at the time they were made. Search managers should constantly strive to have maps best suited to the task at hand. Pipelines, railroads and power lines create easy to recognize clearings which are very helpful to ground searchers. Don't forget what you see on the map reflects the age of the map and the choices of the cartographer. Not every building will be shown. Note that the orchard is identified by a grid pattern of green circles and the natural forests are solid green. 
barn or a shed or a house all have the same map symbols. Some buildings have unique symbols, such as churches, schools, or service offices, for example. Note the springs symbols, and also that the forested areas are solid green, while the open areas are white. Map symbols for lakes and ponds are usually related to their size, while the sizes of streams intermittent and perennial, can vary widely. Be sure to download a copy of the USGS topographic map symbols, and also check out the map legend for your map. The contour lines run around the edge of the marsh, connecting points of equal elevation. Satellite images often hide small water features, especially small streams and ponds. Symbols for scree, talus, or glacial till high up on a mountain will also indicate sand and gravel along streams lower in the drainage. Here is a look at sandbars, pipelines, and unimproved roads. Lava flows, lava caves, and old mines are hazardous places to search. Tick marks highlighted in this slide are used to establish the UTM and USNG coordinate grids, the blue lines. Some maps will have blue tick marks at the intersections of these grid lines. These tick marks are used to establish longitude and latitude references. These reference marks and lines establish the public land survey system for defining areas. Contour lines connect points of equal elevation. Every fifth contour line is thicker and labeled with its elevation. For depressions, Tick marks on the contour line are on the downhill side. Note that it is a depression because the contours form a complete closed loop. This spot elevation has been measured and has a recoverable mark. The map maker will sometimes add approximate or indefinite contours when it is felt that extra terrain information would be helpful. Deposits from a lahar on the south side of Mount St. Helens. There is a debate as to what is scree and what is talus. General consensus seems to be that scree slope is made up of smaller rock pieces, and talus is composed of larger stones. Scree might be fun to run down, talus would be dangerous, slow going. <laughs>